Mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check, stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, this is Hawk Talk with Lisa Bluter. Presented by Oak Knoll, an active life care community. Also brought to you by Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Honda. To see how Honda crushes the competition, see your central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. hy V Score big savings with the new hy V Perks membership. Iowa Lottery. Be a VIP with the Iowa Lottery. Visit IALottery.com for details. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. And by U.S. Bank. Proud to support Iowa basketball. U.S. Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Live from the Hyatt Regency, here is your host, Rob Brooks. Hard to believe, but less than one week and two games remain in the regular season for the 24-4 and Hawkeyes. A road game at Minnesota on Wednesday, and of course, uh, Ohio State at Carver Hawkeye Arena next Sunday for Senior Day. College Game Day will be in attendance again this year, so it should be another great afternoon of uh, women's basketball and uh, certainly um, the Indiana game last week uh, or last year to end the regular season uh, you couldn't uh, script anything better than that but uh, we'll certainly try again uh, this Sunday as we welcome you into Hawk Talk with uh, associate head coach Jan Jensen and for coach Bluter tonight who had a, uh, another commitment hey uh, back to back this is this is kind of nice we're uh, making it a habit right that's okay uh, I, I, it's I a don't good mind habit it. right a good habit when we need to do so we we love when Lisa's here but you know when she has to be in the road. We, I'm happy to pinch it. Absolutely. And, of course, um, you talk about uh, bounce back was kind of the uh, key phrase going into yesterday. Certainly needed that against mm-hmm. a, a good Illinois team that had been playing very, very well. And it just kind of seems like the way the Big Ten is right now, Jan, and the fact that um, these home courts, they're, they're yeah. providing uh, great experiences for uh, the mm-hmm. home team. And it goes back none other than this week where you have – Indiana goes into a pretty tough environment at Illinois, lose by 20. And then, of course, um, a really terrific right. environment, a whiteout at Assembly Hall in uh, Bloomington. And um, Indiana played very, very well. And uh, the Hawkeyes certainly had opportunities. Mm-hmm. But it just kind of shows you how tough it is now in uh, certain areas mm-hmm. in the Big Ten uh, to try to get yeah. those road victories. Yeah, I mean, the home court advantage is, um, you know, no joke. And last year we had the home court advantage, you know, was tremendous. Uh, but now when we're hitting the home court, uh, we're, we're selling it out on the road, which um, really intensifies. Uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword. But certainly, you know, even in the midst of it, I talked about last, last week, it's still really amazing. It's still really awesome to play in, in front of um, such a raucous crowd. I think, um, you know, so much credit goes to Indiana. We'll take the, the disappointing and the one that, uh, you know, we all uh, hated the way that game play, played out. But Indiana, they, they're a whole different deal because in Northwestern, right, a lot of you people went to Northwestern. There was a lot of black and gold, right? Um, we went to Rutgers. There was a lot of black and gold even at Rutgers because there were a lot of fans that made a trip to New York City out of it. A lot of the Hawk fans that live out there, that was their best opportunity. Um, Maryland, a lot more Maryland fans, but we had a pretty good Hawk contingency, not nearly what we did at Northwestern or Rutgers, but there was a feel of interest of watching the Hawks and watching Caitlin. There was not a feeling of interest at Indiana. <laughs> there was not a feeling of, whoa, a lot of this white is shirts were very there. much. Um, that is a full-fledged rivalry um, that um, there's, there's no, there may, be a, there may be respect, but there won't be a compliment, right? Because that's how a rivalry should be. You know, it's like bam, bam, bam. So you couple that with Indiana being very upset that they did – at Illinois, what the Hawks did at Nebraska, right? And we did to Indiana what Indiana did to us, what, two or three weekends ago. And that home court environment, when those crowds get really, really intense and that momentum shifts on you, it can be smothering. And I personally think that women's basketball is in the infancy of figuring it out. I mean, it's it's been so new for most everybody that goes to a home court advantage as the away team. 
it's hard to simulate. And um, you have that on top of Indiana is a very good basketball team. They are excellent. And um, it was a great night for them. We were off. We didn't handle the pressure. Um, but it was understandably so. And Indiana was really, really good that night. Yeah, that's a good point you make too, Jan, because um, you, you go even four years ago, three years ago, you'd go on the road and there would be maybe 4,000 people there, 3,000 people. And, and now everywhere we've been, especially this mm -hmm. year, and you saw signs of it last mm -hmm. year as well, hostile environments, mm -hmm. but also ones with a lot of Hawk fans, but every building mm -hmm. has been at capacity this season. Yeah. It, it's really, I mean, it's amazing. I wish all of you that are here could go with us to all of those places. Um, and then being kind of a long time coaching staff together, um, you walk into it and there's just always a, an appreciation for it. Um, but I think when you're part of, um, you know, growing the game, um, not just in the Caitlin era, but in women's basketball era, you know, in when we coached at Drake and we came after the great Vivian Stringer area era and it was a little, you know, we, they dipped a bit and then, you know, being part of hopefully bringing it back up. It's just, just there's just a sense of um, uh, just like, a, I guess, pride, I suppose, even though you know how hard it, it's going to be. But even bigger than just our staff, it's just where women's basketball is. And, and um, you can just kind of see it growing. I think at, at Tennessee yesterday I saw LSU play there, and they had their biggest crowd. It wasn't a sellout, but, you know, that was a big, big moment for, for them as well. And it's, it hadn't been that way since Pat Summit era, but I think you're seeing it pop up at different places. And I think women's basketball, basketball, the skill level, and when it's played really well, people are understanding um, they can really support it. They don't, they can support the women's game and the men's game, and you don't have to choose if you, if you have, um, you know, an, enough finances to do so. And against Indiana, the one nice thing is uh, I thought the zone uh, did a mm -hmm. good job. A 2-3 yep. zone that uh, you went to defensively. It, it kind of got you back into the game and, and mm -hmm. cut it into, what, eight points, yeah. and then, yep. um, I think uh, they hit a three-point, banked in a three-pointer three. straight away. And so. you know when a banked in three happens yeah. when you're rallying, you might be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you think? Um, but it was. And, you know, the interesting thing is sometimes a zone against a really good shooting team can work because we all don't spend a lot of time practicing against it because you don't see it as much. And so it, it's a little 50-50. You know, sometimes people put the zone on us, just even a basic 2-3, not, not just a box and one, is you spend a lot of your time trying to um, counter off, uh, defenses that are going to double Caitlin, and they're going to trap or they're going to uh, show on ball screens or they're going to flood on ball screens or they're going to double the post. So you, you spend a lot of time trying to have counters. And so then if you spend, you know, just a few percentage of your practice in against the zone, it can stymie you for a while. And against Indiana, you know, it, it actually worked for, for a good stretch. And could we have, you know, if we could have bought a couple of baskets at the right time and if, you know, uh, Chloe, uh, number 22 for them, wouldn't have um, banked in the, the three at that one point. But actually that's the thing we focused on the most with our team was you guys twice, not once, but twice in one of the toughest environments I've ever played in my career. Um, and I'm talking, we played at Connecticut, which was tougher. And that was their major era, you know, way back. They twice, I mean, they, they battled back when we were not near our peak. We were not rolling on offense. Caitlin wasn't hitting. No one was hitting. It was tough sledding. But they somehow kept finding a way to not just lay over when it was 17 points, 18 points. Now, it ended being that. But there was never a just, a, uh, you know, we can't do this. So that's what you can work with at a co as a coaching staff. That's what you can build on. That's what you had to hit upon when everybody else was so disappointed that, you know, how could they do that? You know, why did they do that? We need this. We need that. I'm sure were a few comments, I'm just guessing, <laughs> that all of you might, might have had. Um, is as a coach, um, you know this, that's the last really – you know, intense top team in the top 20 road game you're going to play in. Now, we got to go to Minnesota, and that's a big rivalry too, but they're, they're not Ohio State. They're not um, Indiana, but we got to take care of business. We get to play Ohio State at home. Then everything else is neutral. 
So you got to take the good from the, the, that was a really, it would have been unbelievable confidence building had we could have, you know, you know, pulled it off, but it didn't, it went, you know, south in different areas, but those things we really believe we can fix. But the one thing that you, you can't, you know, work on in practice is that fight and that will. And they had it twice. They brought it back. Then at the end, you know, they, they hit some shots and, you know, so the last couple of minutes, I'm, I'm not going to worry about the, the score getting up to be 17 again. No, because you're right. You felt like a one stop here mm -hmm. and hey, mm -hmm. if you have a, a two or three minute spurt, that's uh, good on offense mm -hmm. and get things clicking. That's a one or two possession yep. game. And like absolutely. you said, you're not at your best. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And th there were some calls that way that w that, that game wasn't our favorite officiated, but it wasn't why we lost. Um, there's just sometimes it's so doggone hard to get consistency in a ref crew calling a moving screen. And the moving screens are so pivotal because on a team that does multiple screening action to set up a three-point shot, if that moving screen is not called and they get a three off of it, it's a major, major momentum swing. And that was a really um, very inconsistently called game with that. But again, you can't dig your holes that you, you we dug a few times and, you know, expect the refs to be perfect because Lord knows they certainly aren't. <laughs> Agreed. Right, right, right. <laughs> but the nice thing is, and there was a, another example of it uh, yesterday against Illinois, that every loss this year, it's been um, a nice bounce back. Mm -hmm. You know, you lose a tough one to Kansas State, score 113 against Drake. Lose a tough one in overtime at Ohio State, come back against Nebraska. Same thing um, at Nebraska with the Michigan game, and then, uh, of course, uh, after the Indiana game yesterday. And that's, uh, I think, has to... Make right. you feel good yeah. that, hey, you don't turn one mm -hmm. into two mm -hmm. and you've seemed to play very well after a loss. Yeah, I think that's, you know, you're you never want it to turn into one or two or three. And um, our players are, you know, they're a great group. They really are. They're battling. Um, they're open. They're willing to to learn. They're uh, veteran. They're, you know, they're always ready to take accountability of what we they could have done better and so when we watch the film and we go back and break it down they're real eager to get back and uh so that's been nice and you know obviously you didn't have the gauntlet right we were able to i mean not that every game in the big 10 isn't a hard one but if you're you're playing three ohio states back to back it'd be hard to put up 100 100 100 right, right. so that was nice that we could have games where we're the matchups um in the positions we needed them to be um you know equal to that we were able to put together a good game plan and then our kids could have confidence in coming out and then really, you know, when, when they catch fire, obviously it's pretty fun to put up a century mark, right? Always, right? Yeah. And especially right. against a, a rival, which mm -hmm. uh, you, they took care of you in uh, yeah. Champaign yesterday. So yeah, a so, bounce back there too. Yeah, so that was, you know, that was, um, you know, we talked about. Illinois was our Nebraska last year, right? That cost you a share of that and this year. Um, so, you know, you you have to remember those things and use them for motivation. Um, but, you know, I was just talking to Kate Martin and, you know, she was, we were talking and she said, ah, you know, just, you know, tough with the, you know, that conference, you know, the, the regular season. And I said, you know, there, we got to use it as motivation, but I think so often in life that we can all spend so much time on the what ifs that then we miss the what could be's. And I think that in basketball is that's a really important skill set to have because you got to it's got to hurt. Right. And it does. And it did. And and I think the reason Nebraska stung so much is we knew the pressure that would be put on, you know, the Indiana game there. And um, it's just, it, it, you know, life just happens. And, you know, it just there's very rarely are there teams. And Don Staley is a heck of a coach and they're doing it, boy. They're undefeated. And. Um, but, you know, it, things happen. It doesn't go according to plan. And I think that's when, as a coach, if you're not in it just for the sole, you know, X's and O's and getting the ring, and I believe that coaching is part of education and it's, it's teaching, is that those are the moments that I think are equally, I would argue, that are equally important as to getting to cut down the net. 
because when they leave this court, there are going to be times when they, they stub their toe in some part of life. There's going to be a Nebraska. And then when it really comes to a true crossroads is how do you handle that? How do you forward think to be like, okay, that didn't end up like I really wanted it to and it cost me. But you know what? I can go get that. And that looks pretty doggone good. And if I get that, or if I come up short even with that, that I did not let yesterday stand in the way of my tomorrow. And as coaches, sometimes you got to do a lot of self-talk before you present to them the, the next day. But I think over the years, I mean, you know, being in our seats, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. You know, it goes up and it goes down and it goes every which way. And sometimes you're on top and within 24 hours, you can be on the dead bottom. So if you can't find a way to find value in the teaching and the climbing, then you're probably in the wrong profession. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Well, we're off and running here for Hawk Talk on a Monday night. one 877 one Jump in the conversation. If you have a uh, question here in-house, come on up, and um, we'll certainly uh, talk about uh, what's on your mind as we will be back with more Hawk Talk from the Hyatt Regency here in Coralville. And this is um, Hawk Talk from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Did you know that UI ranks near the top of the EPA's Green Power Leaderboard? With 84% of our energy coming from renewable sources. Now you can be a part of the team that makes it happen. The University of Iowa Energy Collaborative, our partner in a collaborative, NG North America, is now offering part-time, on-campus positions where you can get hands-on, career-inspiring experience in sustainable utility systems management. Check out the jobs and apply now at UIowaEnergyCollaborative.com. When the game goes into overtime. But... The game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink. Easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Our mission at Openall is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknall is located near University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknall.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. While farmers work hard to grow the best crop, their Iowa corn checkoff investments are hard at work, too. Opening local and global markets for corn and corn-fed products. Educating drivers on unleaded 88 as the best fuel at the pump. Finding new uses for corn and sharing the farmer's story. Iowa corn farmers are backed by researchers, educators, market experts, and more. To keep corn growing Iowa. Welcome back to Hawk Talk. We'll have one more show next week, and uh, then we'll roll into the Big Ten Tournament as March uh, is here on Friday. Hard to believe. And Dodge Street Tire and Auto 
They are here as well, locally owned and operated, and voted best of the area for the 10th consecutive year. Proudly supports Hawkeye women's basketball each season. And you can trust Dodd Street Tire for honest auto repair. And the best deals on Goodyear and Toyo Tires, Dodd Street Tire and Auto, celebrating over 30 good years on the corner of Dodge and Church Streets. Also, Wellmark, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield knows you're here for every fadeaway, every alley-oop, every buzzer beater. And Wellmark is here for every moment as well with trusted health coverage committed to making health care better. Learn more at wellmark.com slash hoops. Well, wasn't sure. But uh, Caitlin Clark uh, did once again get the Big Ten Player of the Week yeah, after averaging amazing. 24 points and 12 and a half boards and almost uh, 10 assists at uh, 9.5. But after her 16th career triple double and uh, fifth triple double of the season yesterday, and now 28 career. Big Ten Players of the Week, of course. That's a, a record and a 10th already this year. It's crazy. That you is. Know, I think we talked about earlier that Caitlin just has a little, little penchant for making the extraordinary ordinary, right? Is uh, so many kids dream of just, you know, someday being a Big Ten Player of the Week. And, you know, she makes it, she makes it pretty regular. Uh, but, you know, her numbers, you know, it's just hard to deny not naming her that because, you know, the stats that she puts up are, you know, really, really quite remarkable. And, you know, last night her three wasn't going real easily. And, you know, she's, you can tell she's getting frustrated. And so I just tried to ease her mind. I went up to her one time. I said, look, you're shooting 30% from the three. And, you know, she's a high volume shooter, right? But she's, I go, you're shooting 30% from the three. You're only three percentage points off of being like you know the benchmark. One out of three, and right? You have a triple bu- double with six minutes left in the game. <laughs> I said, so let's just put it in perspective. I said, you don't usually stay there long, and uh, then you know, it kind of eased up, and she got a couple more, I think, in that. You know, Had a just, couple of big threes in yeah, the fourth. Yeah, and just kind of um, more importantly than just the the winning that game, but I think for the the psyche. Um, but you know, she just does things, you know, at a pretty amazing level and it's hard to meet her mark all the time. Right. Um, but you know, she's, she's carrying a lot, a lot of the pressure and doing a lot of the things and, um, just doing a fabulous job. Well, speaking of Mark, so she can, uh, roll by that 22 Clark. That's, um, uh, where the <laughs> right, shot exactly. took place. I know. Uh, it's a, that, that, was, that was a pretty Michigan. cool deal by that the is. administration. You know, our administration has just been. You know, always, ever since we've been here, been phenomenal. I think, you know, now with the leadership, you know, Beth gets and, and company, you know, just with our marketing or, I mean, ever since Caitlin got here too, you know, I was, we hired a new sports information director and I was part of that search. And I said, listen, you know, if you get this job, you gotta, you got, you're going to have a Heisman campaign yep. after Heisman campaign after Heisman campaign. So you got to be ready to roll. Yep. And his name is Bailey Turner, and he's done a fantastic job along with Brandy Britt, Kelsey Lavadier directs our marketing, um, and everybody else. But they, they just do things the right way. We talked about the celebration after Michigan, but then that's just a fun little thing, the, the logo marker. Um, it just, you know, I'm just really proud to work at Iowa. It's just a, a really classy, classy organization. Yeah, it was fun to see yesterday, no mm-hmm. doubt about it. Well, let's head to the phones, and uh, we'll go out east to New York and bring in Amelia. Amelia, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. Hi, Amelia. Hi. Um, I'm a huge fan of you guys. I have watched every single game. I have gone home from work early to watch a couple of these games. Um, my question is, so when you guys went against Indiana, um, and like looking forward to the Monstars that are South Carolina, why don't you guys ever put in too big, like Hannah and O'Grady or Goodman and O'Grady? So you got two, you know, posts at the same time, just not even necessarily for points, but just for rebounds. Right. And that's a great question. I think a lot of the local folks have that, that question as well. And it's kind of like if you, if you follow football, like you might like look at a team that runs like a West Coast offense. And you might like a couple of the players and you think, man, why doesn't Iowa run that West Coast offense? But really what they're suited to do and the majority of the work that's been done for the months prior, it's really to really highlight a running game. 
because their strengths are the running game. And it looks really simple to say, you know what, we're just going to shift it real quick and we're going we're gonna to do this for about three minutes and that's going to solve it. And it's just um, the, the way that a, a team is created in any sport, the way a, a, a strategy it's it's starting in the summer and you hone it and it goes and you the the shifts the sets the rotations and so let's say let's say that that for the sake of the argument you're right you're going to do better rebounding with bigs but then the people that you want in the game a lot of times like you you want to have all four are in there and maybe you want to have uh uh, Fuhrbach in there to score and you, know, you want to have Kate in the game and you want to have, you know, Caitlin's going to do her thing. Well, you're going to take one of those people out because then you're going to have to not have Kate have minutes because now Kate wouldn't be the four anymore because now you're going to put Hannah at the four and you're going to put O'Grady at the five and where Kate Martin is playing is at the four. So now we're going to say, okay, okay, well then Kate, so now for this game, so now we're going to take Kate and now we're going to put Kate at the, the three because maybe Molly's too small, but now we're going to take Molly the playmaker out because we want to go to this offense. And so in theory, it could maybe, maybe solve a lot of problems, but that's not what we've been working on, right? And so you're right, but I think when you play South Carolina or you play UCLA, they got a 6-7 post, you know, both of them, it's going to be tough sledding whether you have two bigs in there or you have one big in there or one undersized. So it's all fair questions. You know, we ran the triangle offense, which is what I think a lot of people would like right now on occasion um, when we had Megan Gustafson and Hannah Stewart, and it's an awesome offense. It's a post-oriented scoring offense. Our best players, to go to the triangle, it's nice, we believe, when your two most efficient players are posts. Um, when maybe that's not the case, when you maybe graduate a really great post, then you're a little bit more guard heavier. You can put more bodies on the floor that have more versatility if you go to more four out, one in. You can lose some rebounding with that, certainly. And yes, we are losing a little rebounding when you're playing Hannah Stalky at the five right now. Most of the time, she can handle it. She will not, you're right, when you handle it with some of the bigs, and then we'll work on some of the other tweaks. But you will not see us go to a two-point offense or a two-post offense for consistency this season because you just can't change it up just for a three- to four-minute spurt. We can make some tweaks on different specialty defenses is what we did last year, even though we had one true big when we beat South Carolina. But I'll tell you, to beat South Carolina, the stars had a line and it all had to go perfectly. And it was because of the specialty defense, not because of a two-post offense. Well, nobody's done it in a couple of years except mm, you. Absolutely. So. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the only game that they have lost. Amelia, <laughs> thanks uh, very much. And we'll go to uh, Des Moines and bring in Anthony. Anthony, how are you? Hi, Coach. Well, I'm just enjoying this nice warm weather like you are. Uh, how are you folks doing this same day? Good, thanks. Pretty good. Uh, so, two questions I have for you for tonight. Uh, first question I have is, with the season is done, I'd just like to know what does the Bears do with their jerseys when they're not playing basketball? Do they sell them, or I'm not sure what they do. And the question number two is, what do you think the school should do about court storming? I know they have another incident on the men's basketball over the weekend. And I'll uh, hang up the listeners and uh, let's get the Gophers on website and go on. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Anthony. Well, that's been a hot topic again this week. Huh? It has, hasn't it? Um, first off, I think you asked when the season o is over, what do we do with their jerseys? Um, usually we don't get jerseys every year, or uniforms. So some we will... Um, reuse or we'll maybe we'll auction some off for different types of events um, but I'm not really quite sure on that what they do I'll ask our equipment manager on that um, when it comes to this court storming um, you know it's part of everybody likes to watch TV and it's like oh there's an upset in the court storm or the field storm um, everything's just gotten so much more aggressive in society you know I feel like back in the day I mean Either we didn't have, it's because of social media that we didn't see when someone got s stepped on back in 1978 and when Notre Dame football got upset or whatever, 
or we're just doing everything with more, rah, you know, just aggressiveness. So I don't know about that. Um, I do know that since it's kind of been controversial, it's probably time to have a little bit more of a conversation of putting a lot more security around. Um, you know, let everybody jump up and down in their seats. But and, and I think the key like, thing is to, to mm-hmm. get the visiting team off the court. Yeah. Somehow, yeah. some way. Maybe let just like get just get them somehow. boom and then let that happen. I just feel like, you know, it's probably, you know, a little extra money, I suppose, getting those extra people. But I mean, it's it just seems like it's just an odd thing. <laughs> you know, we have so much conversation and nothing's done about it. But I, I see the excitement of it. But I think you're right. We could just hold everybody, let the visitors get off because everybody's frustrated and you're really disoriented. I mean, you're trying to you're get, get somewhere. And even after the Indiana game, there were just a kind of a mob. And so Lisa just kind of, they didn't storm it, but it was like weird people are coming in, you know, just like, I don't know if it's camera people or the bench is going. And I just think it's, there's a lot of emotions after games. So I would say if it was my vote, exactly. Rob's got a great idea. Just get the visitor team, maybe put little security people with them and get them right off. And then come what may with everyone else um, if we really feel like it's necessary. But, you know, probably just more simple just to say, hey, $100,000 fine, everybody figure it out, <laughs> you know. Yeah, some you you hear about some right. fines some places right. and other places not. Right. And I can tell you from a football standpoint, it's um, yeah, obviously the players mm-hmm. are protected upper bodies, right. the legs are yeah, absolutely. protected, but most of them have enough size right, and speed right. to get off there quicker because yeah. it's a little bit further trip, but it's really dangerous. Yeah. I, I, I bet that would be. I've been involved in, uh, like, yeah. in several of them and a couple of basketball ones yeah. where, um, yeah, I mean, you you got to pay attention yeah. and uh, well, not think, try to be a hero. You know, my good friend, and uh, many of you have read his great work, the Des Moines Register writer, Randy Peterson, he got uh, broke his arm, at least one of them, in a major that court helped, storm. Right. And uh, he said it was really, you know, obviously harrowing, but I mean, it, it can happen fast. And when that swell comes down, so it's just, uh, I think there's more of those situations that haven't gotten the press as of, as, as of late as the Duke kid and, and Caitlin, right? Yeah, well, hopefully we won't uh, hear any more about mm-hmm. that uh, this yeah. year, and then they can maybe take the off season right. and, to and, think uh, about it. It'd right. be fresh in the minds right. of people that are going to make those decisions right. to, uh, to get something done. Great start yesterday, uh, mm-hmm. 30 to 18 over mm-hmm. Illinois, two-game winning streak, riding high after the um, the Indiana game, which uh, you know you don't have to have a hot start, but boy, mm-hmm. you sure like to, especially mm-hmm. get that crowd involved early, and you just seem to get uh, so many great con- contributions from um, just up and down the mm-hmm. roster yesterday, which was uh, yeah, it great was to fun. See. Yeah, and I think that's one thing Lisa hit on a- after the. A game and we meet with the team in the locker room is she just gave a lot of um, praise and took a moment just to make sure the kids they saw they felt what they had done because everybody was feeling after Indiana you know their you know they didn't hit no one was hitting Caitlin felt the pressure everybody is just like hey look at this you know you really you did such a great job you know highlighted what Molly did and Kate had done and and just to remind them what it felt like again what they're they're they're, they're capable of and you know I think um I think it's just is an interesting world of which you know we're living in is like you get to a certain level all the college athletes of um every sport Right. And there's always, you know, they're not quite pros yet, but now with all the, you know, collectives and the NILs or whatever, it kind of starts to feel like they're pros. Right. And when people get really vested, it turns real quickly. And I would just say whether you're a fan of South Carolina or you're a fan of the Hawks or you're a fan of Drake Bulldogs, Iowa State is like your frustration after games. If you take to the airwaves, um, these are fragile minds and the men, the football guys, uh, the, the basketball, uh, players, volleyball, what have you. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, are shielding themselves and trying to have, have tunnel vision, but there's just a, a lot that these guys, you know, they're, they're trying to do. And not one of them is trying to miss. Not one of them is trying to, you know, bobble a pass. 
and all of your opinions that you have, that your frustration is I'd say, go to the bar, get a pitcher of beer and talk amongst yourselves <laughs> and solve all the problems. Like we're used to, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, just cause it's like the pressure they're wearing, there's nobody that wants to hit shots in this world more than any team with the kids on the floor. And so yesterday it was such a great moment for the kids that really were able to, uh, you know, the support, you know, s staff to, to, to Caitlin. So, and I just think that because I'm 55 now and I played, um, when there wasn't, you know, anybody, as many people caring and, uh, you know, no one read about the game until the next day and no one could really opinionate about the game until the next day. And when you can hit that hot button send on whatever social media, because you're basically mad at the coach, not doing what you want to do. And I'm, I'm not even talking to us. I've talked about my friends, especially some football buddies. It's just, it's, it's just hard on the kids, you know? And if you want them to really rise to those moments, then build them up. And I'm a big person and build them up. And they'll usually lean into the moment. And uh, I think as fans, we can all do that for your very favorite team, wherever, whoever you cheer for, even our star staunchest rivals. Um, they're, they're still college kids that are uh, playing a game and trying to do it to the best of their ability to give us all something to cheer about. So yesterday, the start was awesome. Uh, it was great to see Molly Davis. It was great to see Kylie Fuhrbach really come in and, and really, you know, get that shot rolling again. So we, we have a lot to build on and a lot to be excited about. Yeah, 25 bench points. That was mm -hmm. uh, great to see and a lot of smiles on the court yesterday. U.S. Cellular is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. Of course, this is Hawk Talk. We are live from the Hyatt Regency here in Coralville, and we invite you to come out uh, next week and watch the show. That'll be our final one. Each week, uh, we're offering uh, special food menu items, including favorites such as uh, steak frites, as well as a new cocktail and $3 draft beer specials. So come on down to the Hyatt Regency in Coralville and join us for a great meal. More from the Hyatt Regency as this is Hawk Talk presented by Oaknall from Learfield. Did you know that UI uses the same amount of energy as all the rest of Iowa City? That's why we have our own power plant, and we're committed to making it clean. By 2025, we'll rely completely on climate-friendly, alternative fuels. Deep in the boiler rooms, engineers from the University of Iowa Energy Collaborative are optimizing the power plant so it can handle these new fuels more efficiently. Learn more about it at UIowaEnergyCollaborative.com. That's UIowaEnergyCollaborative.com. When the game goes into overtime. But the game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash corngrowsiowa. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, nice. which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Our mission at Oaknall is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknall is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknall.com to learn more. 
We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Hyatt Regency. It is Hawk Talk, our final one of February. We'll be back here uh, next week and uh, throughout the Iowa Corn Cyhawk Series. Iowa Corn promotes values that are uniquely Iowan. On behalf of Iowa's corn farmers, we salute all athletes for their hard work and determination, both on and off the field, just like our athletes. Our state leads the nation in corn and ethanol production. And you can follow Iowa Corn on Facebook to learn how corn grows Iowa. Also, tonight's show brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Hawkeyes are tied with Indiana, second place in the Big Ten, and the uh, league leaders, the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes at 15 and 1, will be in town for Senior Day on Sunday. Ohio State uh, takes on Michigan and then um, at Iowa. Indiana is at Northwestern tonight and then uh, we'll finish off the regular season at home against Maryland. Let's uh, head to the state of Florida. It might be warmer here than in it Florida. Might be. Brad, how are you tonight? I'm good. How are you guys tonight? Good, good. Good. I got a question for Coach. I've always sure. felt like Coach Bluter did a great job with whatever her personnel was. And that's why she decided to run her offense. So I think this year's team has more athletes than last year's team or the team before that. you got like eight guards or small forwards or whatever you're going to call it that can really play. So my question is twofold. One is when Hannah gets the ball inside, she's not built like Gustafson or, or Monica. She's more like a springy athlete. So I would like you to teach her how to do a ball fake or a pump fake inside to draw the defender in so she might have a chance for the three versus always just trying to power it up without any ball fakes. That's one. Two, with the team you have, I'd love to see you guys do more trapping, running jumps on the half-court set because you have the athletes to actually do it this year. And I'm totally opposite from the ladies from New York. I never want to see two centers in the game at the same time because it would kill our running game. So I'd like to see us do a one-two-two two press, which I know you won't do, but I'd like to see more trapping on the other team's guards. That would increase the pace, get you guys back into your running game. And when we hit those cold spells that we seem like we've become a habit now the last five days, let Taylor McKay back in there. She's the best three-point shooter maybe in the United States. Run some sets for her and let her shoot it, maybe eight minutes a game. That'd be fair. Anyway, I'll hang up and hear what you have to say. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brad. And you are very right about Hannah. Um, we have worked on the, the fake. Um, I think old habits uh, die a little hard. Um, you know, I, I like an up and under uh, a whole lot. Um, Hannah has had some, sometimes we've had to limit her practice minutes. Uh, she's had a little nagging in injury. So it's a little bit of everything. I think you a lot of times you, a kid, when she gets into the, he or she gets into the throw of a game, if those habits haven't become a confident go-to, you will see them kind of retreat to what has always worked and what worked in high school and what worked sometimes last year. And so we, we have worked on that. I think you'll consider to, you'll continue to see in her, her, um, her progression. She'll, she'll get a little better at when to use the ball fake and hopefully when to use an, an, an up and under. Uh, we also like to take her away from the basket and attack her, you know, attack it, um, you know, from, from the driving area. But you're, you're right. I think all of us um, see a very clean block and we're all sitting there feeling that oh, a fake would have been great. But we do work on it. But I think um, we've just been kind of handcuffed with some reps with that. And um, uh, you know, Hannah, in, someday we'll move her back out to the, the a four. Um, but for right now, um, to, for us to get to the finish line, we do need to see some quick improvement on that. So I, I can appreciate your, your feeling of that as well. Um, yeah, you know, when you're, you're talking about the, the defense, you know, Fran, our buddy Fran, he's here and he's going to do the, you know, his men's show next. But, you know, they do a great job with their, their D. It's kind of like, you know, who you are as a coach. And our coaching staff, we've just never 
really relied on the um, on, on the full court defense or any of the, those trapping. Uh, we debate it every couple of years, and so yeah, I mean, there are times when I wish we had it in. Um, it's just philosophical sometimes. You know, we want to put the extra 10, maybe 10, 12 minutes you spend on a day trying to make that really sharp. Uh, we we prefer to work on different things and typically offense. You know, no surprise there. But I think you got a point, um, and it's a debate. And you know, I'm sure we'll we will uh, debate it again. But. Um, we, that's just not part of our philosophy, you know, right, right now. And it was great to see Hannah have uh, 20 points on mm-hmm. nine of 12 shooting yeah. against yeah. Illinois, nine rebounds. And then when you look at the plus minus category, which mm-hmm. is uh, very important, she had the yeah. highest one on the team mm-hmm. at a uh, plus 23. Lacey, we will get to you from Illinois when we come back our final break. And we'll have more Hawk Talk from the Hyatt Regency presented by Oak Knoll from Learfield. Hey, Hawkeyes, while you're hard at work in class or on the court, there's a team behind the scenes making sure that the power keeps going, the water keeps flowing, and the temps inside are just right. Introducing the University of Iowa Energy Collaborative. The Collaborative is a public-private partnership between UI, NG, and Meridium. It delivers the funds UI needs to drive our academic and research excellence while optimizing campus utilities for a generation to come. Check it out at UIowaEnergyCollaborative.com. When the game goes into overtime. But... The game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink. Easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fanofcorn. Our mission at Oak Knoll is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oak Knoll is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknoll.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Welcome back to Hawk Talk. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not for profit life plan community serving the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oak Knoll is conveniently located near the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye, in downtown Iowa City. Proud presenting sponsor once again this year of Hawk Talk. And you can visit oaknoll.com to learn more. Lacey from Illinois, thanks for waiting. Hello. Um, I have a question. So I have a couple of them. Um, with the win against um, Illinois, how did you bounce back from the loss at Indiana? And just a question about um, rivalry games. What is, um, like, one of the most intense rivalry games you ever um, coached or been a part of in terms of 
um, playing for Iowa. Um. Yeah, I think I uh, just want to know, as you think about uh, the Big Ten, mm-hmm. obviously you got the in-state games, and that's mm-hmm. always a, a big deal for right. non-conference, but anybody sticks out conference-wise? I mean, obviously it's seems like it's been Ohio State, Maryland, Indiana, because yep. they've been really good. Yeah, I, and that, that would be, I mean, every <laughs> every game as a coach feels like a rivalry game. You just don't like Especially anybody. Especially this year. I mean, you don't like anybody. Yeah, and everybody this year went, wants to knock you off. But I think that ri- the rivalry with Indiana has gotten pretty intense. It's chippy. Uh, the players, when they play, it's, you know, there's a lot of jawing. Um, you know, the way we won it last year when Caitlin hit the buzzer, beater. Um, you know, then we had them this year or this, we beat them 17 points, you know, after then they got us by the same margin or whatever. So I think that one's pretty intense. I think we've had some big ones against Maryland. Um, I, and you know, Ohio state and Iowa have always been one in every sport. So I'd say those three, but I wouldn't, I mean, I think this year we've been everybody's intense game. I don't think Nebraska likes as much. I don't That's think Illinois yeah. doesn't like as much. I mean, I think. Uh, they're pretty intense, so that's what that's what I think. And then um, also wanted to just touch upon the uh, the bounce back factor that uh, mm-hmm. has been good in mm-hmm. the few losses you've had this year. Yeah, I think um, you know any team you know after you lose, I think I don't think many coaches have to do a lot of motivation. You know, they most of us would like to play immediately following a loss. If it was legal just to schedule someone when we landed back after Indiana games or any ones you lose and just go right play to the and arena. feel better. You know, <laughs> so we, we bounce back by, you know, I think thinking of the looking at the, the comebacks. We had two really good comebacks in a tough environment at Indiana. And then we looked at all the areas that that we could control that we didn't do so well. And we gave a lot of credit to what Indiana did really well. And then we put it into a scouting port of Illinois and we said, look, we can feel a whole lot better about, you know, who we are moving forward if we do X, Y, and Z. And the, the team was more than excited to get ready to roll for that. Senior day, uh, always a little bittersweet, mm-hmm. emotional. But uh, the nice thing is mm-hmm. uh, for the seniors that uh, mm-hmm. it won't be their last game yep. inside yes. Carver Hawkeye. It would be a little tougher mm-hmm. if, it, right. if it were to be. Yeah, that, that's what we've been so blessed with, you know, with the women's game, uh, the top, you know, top seeds get to host the first two round of the NCAA tournament. We've been able to do that over the last few, few years. So it'll be a tough, you know, uh, emotional day. We'll um, celebrate them, but it is nice to know that we get a couple of games more with them all in, in, in Carver. And then um, obviously uh, – that's going to be a huge day. College game day will be uh, inside the arena mm-hmm. and uh, get there early, just like uh, it was at Indiana. Yeah, we hope you have a year. great turnout a, yeah, again. We'll last year was electric, and we have a we have a lot of great recruits coming to that game. So we can just you can rock it. You can help us rock it. Bring all <laughs> your friends to come to that. And make make Carver be be lit because we'd love to have them see that type of environment. But uh, as you mentioned, got to take care of business Wednesday night. Uh, we do up in Gopherland, yeah, and, and we are certainly not looking over overlooking that. That's a rivalry, too, at Border War, and we've gotten some great recruits from there. And uh, they got a new coach who's a friend of ours do, doing a great job. She's had a couple tough injuries as of late. Um, but, you know, Monica Sonato's little sister, uh, she's playing more and more minutes. We thank the world of that family. And every time I see her, I'm like, you can have a great game except the one against right. us. Um, but they're, you know, they're, they're scary. You know, it's that team that slid that games in there before the big, you know, game against Ohio State. But um, our, our kids are not taking it lightly. We know we have to go up there and, and take care of business. And uh, hopefully, you know, it's going to be another sellout, you know, and that if anybody had been to Williams Arena at the barn, it's a pretty incredible environment. So I'm, I'm hoping that one does, that has a lot more Hawk fans in it than, than the Gophers. So, I mean, more as in, I see more black and gold. It certainly will have a lot of a share of maroon, but hopefully there'll be some Hawks there. Yeah, Maggie uh, Sonano played 22 minutes mm-hmm. against uh, Nebraska. Minnesota lost at Lincoln 72-51. But as we've talked about, uh, teams in this league a lot different at home than they yeah, are on the, the road. Home, the home court is extremely <laughs> important. Uh, I mean, they just there's just something about the home court advantage. And this year, particularly in the Big Ten, uh, the home court has served to be very, very successful. And uh, teams like that trying to get momentum uh, going into yeah. March because it's kind of their yeah. last shot. Yeah, it's their last shot. And, you know, teams like 
you know, Minnesota, like there's nothing to lose. There's absolutely no pressure where we obviously have all the pressure, right? And you want, we want that. I mean, I'll take pressure every day. If, if you don't have pressure, then you're not usually in a, in a position where it matters. But it's, it's scary when you're facing, facing teams that, you know, they got nothing to lose. So we're, we're going to have to bring it. And I'm, I'm confident we will. Yeah, here we go. Off to March, Here we right? go. Yeah, that's right. And thanks for all of our great support. I, I can't thank our fans enough for everything you mean to us uh, at Carver and on the road and all your support. You, you help us recruiting. And, you know, you just help our team win. And we're, we're so, so thankful. And thank you for everybody who came out to support us tonight, too. Jan, appreciate it. The Fran McCaffrey Show is coming up next. Special guest, uh, Brock Harding, as we'll have um, that show coming up from the Hyatt Regency, presented by Oak Knoll from Learfield. Did you know that UI ranks near the top of the EPA's Green Power Leaderboard? With 84% of our energy coming from renewable sources. Now you can be a part of the team that makes it happen. The University of Iowa Energy Collaborative, our partner in a collaborative, NG North America, is now offering part-time, on-campus positions where you can get hands-on, career-inspiring experience in sustainable utility systems management. Check out the jobs and apply now at UIowaEnergyCollaborative.com. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. While farmers work hard to grow the best crop, their Iowa corn checkoff investments are hard at work, too. Opening local and global markets for corn and corn-fed products. Educating drivers on unleaded 88 as the best fuel at the pump. Finding new uses for corn and sharing the farmer's story. Iowa corn farmers are backed by researchers, educators, market experts, and more. To keep corn growing Iowa. Ground beef is only $2.99 a pound at Hy-Vee. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the Hy-Vee Perks membership. And $2.99 a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the Hy-Vee Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store-wide every time you shop. And count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for ground beef every day, sign up for Hy-Vee Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, 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 coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. (laughs) While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. On the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield, this has been Hawk Talk with Lisa Bluter, presented by Oak Knoll, an active life care community. Also brought to you by Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Honda, to see how Honda crushes the competition, see your central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. High V, score big savings with the new High V Perks membership. Iowa Lottery, be a VIP with the Iowa Lottery. Visit IALottery.com for details. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by U.S. Bank, proud to support Iowa basketball. U.S. Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.